Hey, this is Sam from Sure. In this video tutorial, we're going to pick back up on the inclusion groups feature and use it in a special workflow to individually prioritize certain frequencies of the same type as other frequencies in our coordination. I want to paint a scenario for you that I think has probably happened to a lot of us who have done frequency coordinations for any sort of high tier event, or, or even not a high tier event. And when we're finding frequencies for um, any particular sort of show, the chances are that there's uh, some money talent, some important RF channel that uh, is critical to the event, whether that's um, the leader of a house of worship event or the lead singer of a band or the, the CEO of a company at a corporate gig. Not all channels are created equally. And while, you know, we want, you know, as RF coordinators, we want our coordinations to be as robust as we can. If one frequency has to be more robust than the other, the other, typically it's that lead talent or that money mic channel that we want to protect and do everything we can to make sure is super robust. Uh, which makes perfect sense. Uh, and uh, uh, when you coordinate frequencies with, wire with wireless workbench, there are some tools put in place that make it easier to do those sorts of things, but by default, uh, it might not be exactly set up how you would expect it to be. So let me paint, uh, dive deeper into a scenario here. Let's say uh, we've got a, a live touring event, let's say it's Beyonce, and Beyonce has uh, her entire band has 24 channels of Axiom Digital uh, that they use, and I've, I've displayed that right here. So you'll see I've got, you know, 24 channels. There's 23 channels I've named, just like RF, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then Beyonce. She's the money mic. And uh, as wireless workbench is, is configured by default, because all of these systems are of the same model and band, wireless workbench groups all of those frequencies together. And the, the problem with that might be I have no way of separating any compatibility parameters for Beyonce any differently from any of the other wireless channels that I'm coordinating. For example, if I wanted all these systems to be robust, I apply the robust uh, compatibility profile to all of these frequencies, not just to Beyonce's. Now, I haven't loaded the scan here. I certainly could have to, made the, to make the uh, uh, coordination process more difficult, but what I want to show you today is with the use of inclusion groups, I can separate Beyonce's channel to be independent from the rest of these channels, despite the fact that they're all the same model and band. And doing so will let me give Beyonce the special treatment that she deserves. So it all starts with inclusion groups. And inclusion groups, as you might remember from previous videos, is a feature that lets uh, you assign on a channel by channel basis certain spectral ranges to allocate those channels to a certain area in the spectrum. Now, in the previous examples we've done, uh, specifically band planning, uh, those uh, uh, inclusion groups was used to limit the bandwidth of certain channels and allocate them, let's say, like IEMs on the high end of a particular band and microphones on the lower end of a band. We're actually going to use this feature not to limit the spectrum of any particular uh, frequencies or channels, but we're going to use it to break out and individually manage certain channels different than others. So let me show you how this works. I'll go into the inclusions. Uh, dialog and I'll turn on the inclusions list feature and when I open this dialog what I want to do is create a special list just for the purposes of Beyonce and what I'm gonna do is within this list I'm gonna create a group and this group is really the thing that you want to configure this group tells you what are the frequency ranges that I'm going to limit my channels to now as I mentioned we're not going to limit our tunable bandwidth for Beyonce's channel we want her to have the best possible channel uh, there is so I'm gonna call this VIP um, I'll just call it VIP. And within this group, I'm going to enter a frequency range that spans the entire tunable bandwidth of wireless workbench. It almost doesn't even matter what frequencies we put here. All that matters is we are not constraining the bands of any of our devices that might be associated with this VIP group. So our Axiom Digital G57 band goes from about 470 to the uh, low 600s in terms of megahertz. So th this frequency range isn't going to constrain that at all. But what I'll show you is, uh, when I save this group and apply it, I'm actually going to turn this visualization off, it'll be a little bit clearer. Um, what I can do now is actually assign Beyonce's channel to that inclusion group. And what that will do is that will break out this channel into a separate header that I can configure individually. So in order to do that, I need to clear this uh, coordination workspace so that I can re-import all of our channels once that inclusion group has been assigned. So I'll go back to the inventory because this is where my channel started. You see I've got my money talent highlighted in yellow right there. And I can just double click in the inclusion groups column for Beyonce's channel. 
and I'll assign that to VIP. And now you'll notice that VIP is shown for Beyonce and it's not shown for anybody else, signifying that only Beyonce's channel is assigned to that inclusion group. And when I go back to the frequency coordination view and re-import everything, you'll notice that something different has happened. Instead of all of my Axiant Digital G57 frequencies being shown under one header, I've now got two. There's Beyonce in the VIP inclusion group and there's everybody else. And the beauty of this is, now I can say, you know what, Let, let's make sure Beyonce has super robust frequencies with the compatibility profile of robust assigned, and everybody else uh, I'll assign to more frequencies, or standard, or whatever the case might be. And now when I calculate frequencies, you can see that Beyonce's channel, or my Money Talent channel, is handled individually and separate from everything else. Now just to drive the point home, uh, if I calculate again, you'll notice Beyonce's channel might jump around. Actually, let me color code it so that we can see where Beyonce's channel is. Right now it's on the low end, 473. It was on, uh, now it's on the 600s earlier. This isn't frequency constrained, Beyonce's channel. It can hop anywhere within the bandwidth of Axiom Digital. And the reason it, it isn't constrained is because the inclusion group that we used uh, didn't cut down on the usable band. It was wider than the bandwidth that Axiom Digital tunes to. And so this uh, uh, creation of sort of a VIP or, or some sort of separate inclusion group could be used for any type of system. If I wanted to add PSM systems, uh, let's see, I'll add PSM 1000 because Beyonce will use PSM 1000 as well. I can add six channels for the uh, rest of the band. And then I'm going to add two channels or one channel and I'll apply the inclusion group just for Beyonce. Um, I'll add those. And now you'll notice in my IEMs, I actually only need one channel uh, to have that inclusion group applied. But now you'll notice a bunch of PSMs without an inclusion group and then one PSM with that inclusion group applied. And now if I go back to the frequency coordination view, I can re-import everything again, which will grab my IEMs that I just added. And you'll notice the same exact thing has happened here. I've actually got uh, PSM 1000 G10s, the seven frequencies that are um, for everybody else, which I can apply the more, uh, more frequencies profile to, and then Beyonce's Money Talent uh, uh, IEM system, which is VIP, and I can apply Robust to. So this is a great feature that lets us um, customize which channels uh, are separated from the rest of their uh, like model and bands so that we can apply unique or custom compatibility profiles to them. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. I know this is taking a feature that was used for or designed for one particular application and sort of using it in a different application, but I think it's really helpful if you're ever in the scenario where you want to treat certain frequencies differently than others. This is a great way to prioritize and customize the compatibility for certain systems. So do me a favor, if you liked this video or you want more uh, videos that show you tips and tricks of how to get the most out of wireless workbench, give this a thumbs up to let us know. And if you've got any questions or comments, make sure to leave them down below. Thanks.